Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In the Flame 2023.2 update, a few enhancements have been made to the render and write nodes based on your feedback. So in this video, we'll discuss setting up a render, looking at the render duration, offsetting timecodes where needed, and various improvements to the write file node, which should make the open clip and versioning workflows a lot easier. Once you have completed your batch node based composite, you need to render the result. You can either use the render node to keep the renders in Flames Media Cache, or you can use the write file node to export the renders to an unmanaged external location. With either node, you can set them up in two ways. The first way is gestural, whereby you drag the node out of the node bin and connect your RGB and any mats or alphas. Next, you would choose what type of clip you'd like to create – RGBA or multi-channel. The second way to add a render or write file node is to right-click on the last node of the composite and choose one of the options. In the context menu, you can choose between RGBA and multi-channel. And when you make your choice, Flame will automatically connect the nodes for you. This is handy for lots of multi-channel media, which is covered in a separate multi-channel video for Flame 2023.2. Another change to the render and write file nodes is the render duration or render range. By default, when you add either node, the length of the render will be based on the length of your setup. So no need to go through each node and manually set the duration. Even if you change the duration of the batch group, all the render and write file nodes will update to the new length. Now of course, you can set the render range to custom and manually dial in the frame if you choose, but this automation saves you loads of time. And if you switch to the render list to see all the render and write file nodes in the batch group, there is also a range column that you can now toggle between setup and custom. Setup uses the in and out frames from the batch group, and custom will allow you to choose your own start and end frame for the renders. Offsetting timecode has always been available in the Render node, and now it is also available in the Write File node. To show you how this works, let's say you have a batch group and you want to start rendering from frame 10 instead of the first frame of the composite. So you need to set the render range to custom and choose to start rendering from frame 10. This is reflected in the player bar when the node is selected as well as in the render list. Looking back at the basic menu, you may also have set the source and record timecodes that you want to associate with the rendered media. The idea is that your source and renders have the same timecodes in order to help keep things in sync through your pipeline. This is where you would use Offset Timecode. Offset Timecode is on by default. And this means that the source and record timecodes will always be locked with frame 1 of the batch group, which in turn should match the timecodes of frame 1 of the original source media. So rendering from frame 10 with offset timecode enabled will ensure that it has the matching timecode of frame 10 from the original source media. As I said, keeping things in sync. If offset timecode is off, the defined timecodes will be written to the first frame of the render, which in this case will be frame 10. So if you're all about keeping sync, the render will be 10 frames out of sync with the source media. This does have its uses in some pipelines, but most of the time I keep offset timecode on. And as I mentioned, it's now available in both the render and write file nodes. One minor update to the write file node 
is that creating an open clip with your render now follows the padding of a batch group iteration. For example, if you were to click on the batch group field to rename it, you can see the iteration token in the pattern field. You can increase or decrease the padding to your liking. When you go to the Open Clip options in the Write File node, you can set the Open Clip to follow the batch group iterations, and you'll note it will automatically work out the correct padding. So any iterations or versions you make for this Open Clip will match its corresponding batch iteration more accurately. Another improvement to the Write File node, which may not be that obvious, is a small enhancement when including setups with your renders. For example, let's render this batch node tree and look at the open clip. In the timeline environment, you can select the open clip segment and examine the properties. If you want to open the segment as a batch group, you do so through the pull down menu. This loads the setup file and creates a new batch group with the same name. The change from previous versions is that all the render and write file nodes are still present in the batch node tree and are no longer removed from the setup. You can distinguish the correct write file node by looking at the render list or batch schematic and seeing the active write file node that created the current open clip. So render and write file nodes are no longer removed as part of this workflow. The second outcome that has been improved with the setup enhancement is when it comes to versioning with OpenClip. So instead of opening a batch group, you can click the pull down menu and choose to create a new version. This launches the setup in a versioning history mode where Flame knows which write file node is needed for the versioning, and the other render or write file nodes are greyed out. So you don't have to do anything to the write file node in order to make a new version. All that is required is to iterate a new version, make a definitive change to create your new version of your shot, and finally, you would press return to render the batch node tree and this will process your new version. Once the render is complete, you can go back to the open clip properties and toggle between the different versions in the segment. One final enhancement to the write file node is what we call add to workspace. Essentially, this removes the manual process of importing your render once it's been generated by batch or batch effects. So if create open clip is off, your rendered frames will be imported as a clip. And if create open clip is on, Flame will import the generated open clip, enabling a versioning workflow. Add to workspace is on by default and it is located under the Include Setup option. If required, you can change the default in the Batch and BatchFX Preferences menu. So when you render a batch node tree using Add to Workspace, the generated open clip will automatically import itself to your chosen destination. The open clip segment can then be edited directly into a sequence, and no need to leave the Flame application. So this is a big time saver. As a final note and a safety precaution, Add to Workspace is disabled for background rendering. Since it is possible to continue working in Flame with Burn or Background Reactor, any changes to the structure of the project could result in losing the destination for the incoming open clip. Therefore, in these instances, Add to Workspace is unavailable. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. And thanks for watching.